Welcome back to another episode of Forgotten Gear Restorations. This is part two of that Princeton Reverb reissue project where we're modifying it for tone and reliability. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, you could find your favorite manufacturer of amplifier in the playlist section. Bye. All right, top of the morning, goons and mutants. We are back inside of that 65 Princeton Reverb reissue. And uh, we're just taking care of some bits and pieces. I gotta go shopping today. So let me see if I can make as much impact as possible in this little project of ours before I need to vacate the premises. So um, I am working on, well, you can see I just put a nice little chassis ground together. Um, this will be obviously the, the, the main solder joint, but I'm using a terminal strip. So after the fact, I can go ahead and tie the rest of the guys to ground at this point. That'll be a beautiful thing. Uh, you could probably also see here in the foreground that I got to clean up that terminal right there. Um, but um, I'll be putting some uh, resistors to ground there. You know, the, the whole artificial center tap thing. Be doing that. Look at this guy. Get this guy off. A little blob there. My apologies. That iron's so big you just can't see. Or maybe it's just my uh, failing eyesight. In any case, I will uh, touch base with you guys later. Bye. Oh yeah, uh, also, uh, just cleaning things up. Um, I, I relocated this, this ground here for, um, you can see it's for the, uh, the main reservoir cap. Also uh, tying uh, the bias supply cap to ground there as well. And then you can see, let's see, what else is sitting there? Oh yeah, so you have the uh, phase inverter supply. Phase inverter looks like, uh, possibly, wow, are they running the uh, reverb transformer off of there? I need to trace that out. Uh, but at any rate, we'll see if I need to reconfigure the ground, uh, the ground uh, component of this. So prior when I played it, there wasn't really any background noise of, of consequence. Relatively quiet amp, but if we can improve there, then we'll improve there. So update soon. Well, you see in the center of the frame here, um, that's the business end of the spade lug connectors on a PCB. So there's two there. Um, you can, well, now in the center of the frame, uh, just each one flanking that little uh, plastic standoff. I'm going to clean those up. We're going to repurpose that. All right, now um, I've removed all of those spade lug connectors um, on the uh, high voltage side. Well, the, the ones that I'm repurposing anyway. So uh, this one here, this is uh, P13, 14, and 15. This one here, and then uh, this guy here. This is where my MOVs will be connecting. You can see I've um, made some bridges there. I've uh, clipped and tucked that um, the, the high voltage tap there. Um, uh, th this is where uh, the power for the um, output transformer will be entering uh, the primary side of that. Um, and I, I'm gonna clean up all this stuff. This is, this is a work in progress. It's incredibly messy. So I'll show you guys the top side. Bye. Not much time left. Before I do that, let me just try to be efficient as a coffee kicks in. Awesome. Beautiful. So, we're in business. All right, you guys are getting a shaky hand cam. I'm uh, at the three quarter mark on this project. Test layout, of course you know that as soon as you zip tie something, there's gonna be a reason to go underneath a circuit board somewhere. But that's where we are right now. I'm just testing some layouts, uh, just briefly. The new artificial center tap, uh, we have a chassis solder joint there, just a tie point uh, through this terminal lug right here, our solder lug. Um, cleaned up layout, I'm still testing the layout. Uh, these guys you don't throw away. 
these can handle 300 more volts than the typical 1N4007 and a handful more in the way of current. So these are a bit stouter. They're not 5408s, but they're somewhere in between and I like them. So this is just my personal taste. I like 1Ks on these guys. It doesn't limit uh, power. We have the new um, IE, IEC inlet wiring here, um, the fusing the hot, switching to neutral, the whole thing. Um, I've depopulated uh, this as much as I want to. I'm leaving some components there so it just doesn't look like it was a strip down for the vultures. Uh, new filter caps uh, going back down this way as well towards the preamp. Um, we have we have the new uh, dropping resistors or decoupling resistors, depending on which way you want to say it. Uh, these guys here just need to straighten some of the components out, so you can see a nice little air gap there. Um, oh, why is it crooked? I just uh, repurposed some of the trimmings for jumpers. Um, and I don't have time to straighten them out. So if you don't like it, tough tits. You know what the Russians say. Um, I do need to clip this little guy. That's uh, an underboard jumper. Uh, rather, that's um, an underboard uh, ground connection. Um, that I was just cleaning things up. So I was trying to move some of the things underneath the board where possible. Uh, the MOVs. Uh, I think I told you guys earlier that uh, removing the spade lug connectors, or the lugs themselves rather, um, would, would be handy, a handy way to tie these together. So basically, this goes to the plates of this guy right here. This one goes to the plate of that octal over there. They connect here. Um, and where they connect is, is, is where the uh, high tension comes in on the primary of the output transformer. And anything that exceeds their rated threshold will cause these to conduct and then dump that excess voltage, current, in the form of heat. And then these guys, once the environment is safe again for the output transformer, not the tubes, they'll shut off. They'll, they'll cease to conduct. So a much better, more elegant solution, more practical solution and effective than running those diodes to ground from the plates themselves. Um, yeah, tweaked. Um, obviously, the uh, the uh, the slowest rate on on the trim speed. Uh, that's the, that's such a common thing. Uh, did the old trick with the four seventy k to deepen the intensity. Uh, none of this is new. Uh, th these are just these are mods that are as old as time itself. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I, I need to take care of that little grid on the driver here, the reverb driver uh, that run there. So much excess wire fender, come on, worse than the 70s. You're just missing the wax. That's about it. Um, I, I'm not going to trim those. Uh, that's outside the scope of this, and it's certainly going to be outside the budget. Um, I've, I've run, um, I, speaking of, sorry, I got to back up here. I have a meeting in about 30 minutes I need to prep for. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, the grid stoppers for now, I'm going to leave them on the board, and that's fine. The thing was not oscillating prior. It's not uh, unstable. So if I determine there's an issue, I'll pop them back up here, or rather I'll move them up here, relocate, and then we'll go ahead and obviously um, put jumpers there and then run the leads over like I did for the screen grid. So that's going to be that. You guys can uh, take a peek at how clean it is. Well, what's not clean is there's about 5,000 uh, wire clippings, solder splashes, and a lot of flux that I need to clean off because that's just, look how horrible that looks. This thing needs to be spick and span. And um, I was tempted uh, to go old school on this, but this is just pushing me, pu pushing me too far out of the scope on this one. So... We'll just leave it where it is for now. Update soon.